Prime Minister Modi leads International Yoga Day celebrations from Mysuru. 25 crore people will be taking part in celebrations across the globe. Army, Air Force, Navy chiefs to meet with the Prime Minister. Meanwhile, Congress leaders meet with the President seeking the withdrawal of Agnipat scheme. The Prime Minister says the scheme will help in nation building. Top corporates join in and tweet to say that they are willing to offer jobs to Agni Veers. The army issues a notification registrations to open in July. Rahul Gandhi has been summoned by the ED for the fifth day today. Questioned for about 40 hours over four days so far. Four candidates of Maharashtra's ruling alliance and four of the BJP got elected to the Legislative Council. The results have indicated cross-voting by Congress MLAs. Flood havoc continues in the northeast. Of 47 lakh people have been affected in Assam, over 32 districts. And the water levels overflowing in the Baraka River, entering the Silchar Town Indian Air Force to join flood relief operations. In Meghalaya, the key uh, Sonapur tunnel has been hit by landslides again. Many passengers stranding uh, have been stranded due to that. This is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the area that connects the uh, Meghalaya to the rest of the northeast. And uh, staying uh, with the news of uh, pleas against Agnipa scheme, another petition challenging the Agnipa scheme is, has now been filed in the Supreme Court. This is the third plea that's been filed against Agnipa. All three pleas so far have been filed by lawyers. And the third plea has now been filed by Harsh uh, Ajay Singh. Uh, earlier two pleas were filed by lawyers Vishal Tiwari and ML Sharma. The plea filed by ML Sharma has alleged that the government has uh, quashed uh, the century-old selection process for the armed forces, which is contrary to the constitutional provision and without having parliamentary approval. The plea also referred to the protests all over the country against the scheme and the plea filed by lawyer Vishal Tiwari has also said that the Supreme Court should set up a committee to evaluate the impact of this new scheme for the armed forces that will be having as far as the national security is concerned and also establish a special investigation team to inquire into the large-scale violence as leading to destruction of public property following the launch of the scheme. So now a third plea has been filed. The three service chiefs are set to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi today to brief him on the Agnipath recruitment scheme, which has seen nationwide protests, mostly by the youth across the country. Several opposition parties, including the Congress, have dubbed Agnipath the largest blunder. And this is the latest uh, blunder as far as the government and part of a series that also includes demonetization as well as farm loss. The government has, in fact, ruled out a rollback. In fact, uh, even as the protests continued over those uh, the centers, Agnipath short term a recruitment plan for armed forces. The army issued a notification for the induction of soldiers under the scheme. The online registration will begin in July. Now, over 600 trains were cancelled on Monday as part of Bharat Band against the Agnipath military recruitment scheme. The protesters are demanding a rollback of the scheme while the government continues to stand its ground. The Congress leaders have, uh, they were sitting on uh, Satyagraha at the Jantar Mantar in the national capital to express solidarity as far as the armed forces aspirants are concerned, protesting against that newly uh, scheme, uh, the new scheme that is being introduced by the government, Agnipath. Some youth Congress workers were detained after they blocked a train at the Shivaji Bridge railway station near Connaught Place. Parts of Delhi witnessed traffic jams as the police have tightened security across the city as well as its bordering areas. While industry leaders like uh, Mahindra Group's chairman Anand Mahindra, RPG Enterprise chairman Harsh Goenka, we also have Biocon Limited chairperson uh, Kiran Majumdar Shah and also Apollo Hospitals Group Joint Managing Director Sangeeta Reddy who have now come out in full support of the scheme. 
Tata South Chairperson uh, Chandrasekharan has also joined that list, backing the centre's Agnikpat scheme, saying apart from the opportunity for the youth to serve the defence forces, it will also make available a very disciplined and trained workforce for the industry, including the Tata Group. So, a lot of the corporates coming out in uh, solidarity and also supporting that cause, saying that they will in fact help uh, people get jobs uh, after that scheme, uh, you know, after the four years in uh, that scheme. The Prime Minister, without directly mentioning the scheme or the protests, uh, spoke up and spoke up in support of the Agnipath scheme. A number of uh, opposition political parties and a significant number of military experts have also slammed the short-term recruitment scheme, saying it will adversely impact, this will impact the functioning of the armed forces. Listen in. Kai fatre, kai reform, tatkali upro se apriya lag sakte hai, lekin samay ke saath un reform ka lab aad besh anubhav karta hai. Reform ka rasta hi hume naye lakshyo, naye sankal ukaupi ke tarab le jata hai. इसका डिस्कशन नहीं हुआ ये डिफेंस कंसल्टेटिव कमेटी में भी नहीं आया स्टैंडिंग कमेटी में भी नहीं आया तो आप इसको अच्छी तरह से देखे नहीं और इसका बहुत बड़ा नुकसान हमारे युवाओं को हो रहा है सदन में लाए हाँ सदन में कई सदन में भी नहीं लाए तो ये हमारी चीजें उनके सामने रखे now, over 600 trains were cancelled in view of Bharat Band call in parts of the country over the centre's Agnipath scheme, leaving many stranded on Monday. Here's a full report. Thousands of passengers stranded at railway stations across Bihar, as over 600 trains were either suspended or delayed in the state. A fallout of the protests against the Agnipath scheme. In Delhi, there were massive traffic jams on routes like the Delhi Gurgaon Expressway, where police was checking vehicles entering Delhi for any protesters. train आज पता चला कि ट्रेन कैंसिल है जिस कारण से आज लौटने का भी कोई ट्रेन नहीं है द इंटरनेट वॉज शट डाउन इन एज मेनी एज ट्वेंटी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिहार एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट डिप्लॉयड पैरामिलिट्री फोर्सेज एट इलेवन पार्टी ऑफिस ऑफ बीजेपी विच आर कंसिडर वर्नरेबल ऑन सिक्सटीन जून प्रोटेस्टर्स हैड अटैक एम एल एज एंड पार्टी ऑफिस ऑफ द बीजेपी दिस हैज कॉज अ मैसेव रिफ्ट इन द रूलिंग बीजेपी जे डी यू अलायंस with the bjp accusing chief minister nitish kumar's government of going soft on protesters with the center making it clear it will not roll back the agnipath scheme many young men in bihar say they are deeply disappointed इसको क्या कह सकते हैं तानाशाही की सरकार कह सकते हैं मजबूरन इसको इम्प्लीमेंट किया जा रहा है सर हमें ये नहीं समझ आ रहा है कि सर तीन साल हम लोग यहाँ मेहनत करके सेना में भर्ती हो रहे हैं मात्र चार साल ड्यूटी करने के लिए स्टूडेंट्स ऑल्सो केम आउट ऑन स्ट्रीट्स इन मेनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स ऑफ हरियाणा टू प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द अग्निपथ स्कीम इन झज्जर सम स्टूडेंट्स वर डिटेन एंड लेटर रिलीज Farm union leaders also extended their support to this agitation and allowed vehicles to pass without paying the toll plaza for 3 hours. Long queues of slowly moving vehicles were also witnessed at Delhi Noida flyway, Meerut expressway, Anand Vihar, Sarai Kale Khan and Pragati Maidan. The protests against the Agnipath scheme reminds us of the initial days when the farm laws were passed by the government of India and when the agitation started the government of India had absolutely denied that the farm laws will ever be rolled back but then after a year long protest by the farmer groups the government had to take a u turn and roll back the farm laws and with the protest continuing against the agnipath recruitment policy in different parts of the country what remains to be seen is that whether this will culminate into a similar kind of agitation across the country with camera person sushil rathi manish kumar in patna and mohammad ghazali in chandigarh amakshi dongre for ndtv Moving on, five candidates of Maharashtra's ruling alliance and five of the BJP got elected to the Legislative Council on Monday amid cross-voting by MLAs believed to be on the government side. NDTV Saurabh Gupta spoke to some key players involved. Let's just listen in. Uh, very quickly, uh, sir, firstly, congratulations. You, you won. But, uh, you know, there is also uh, uh, the fact is that the MVA together hasn't really won. It's not like this. If you see that we have all won uh, seats which we had contested and you have seen how... 
the opposition has tried to manipulate this vote, how they have tried to pressurize the people. And I uh, really congratulate to the brave MLAs who, in spite of so many things, so many things which they tried to do it, karke, and they have voted uh, to this Mahavikas Agadi. So have all Shiv Sena MLAs voted as expected or has there it been some cross-voting? No, it is accepted. Uh, Sir, uh, defectors bahut sare hue sarkar se and aap, uh, you are the fifth candidate of the BJP who has won. Uh, defectors ke baare mein kya kahenge? Jo aapko jitaya hai. Definitely we are very happy. Our great leader Devendra Fadnavi ji, jinho ne ye sari rananiti banai, us Devendra Fadnavi ji ka mein man se abhar maanta hoon. Aur ye pure mahavika shagadi ka vijay parabo hai. Bharatiya Janta Party ka jo vijay hua, uske saamne Shiva Sena ke baramad jo kam hue, ये हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है जिस तरीके से संजय राउत जी ने कल बताया था कि हम देवेंद्र फडणवीस हमारे पैर के नीचे आकर बैठेंगे आज महाविकास आघाड़ी को उनके पैर के तरह रोंगला कर हमने मारा है और उसका हमें अभिमान है सर ये डिफेक्टर्स आए कैसे बीजेपी में ये बताइए मुख्यमंत्री मिलते नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी काम करता नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी के पास लोग जाते हैं तो किसी के पास वक्त नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी भ्रष्टाचार में मग्न है ऐसे ऐसे समय में जो आमदार सच में काम करना चाहते हैं वो आमदार देवेंद्र जी के पाँच साल के पिछले पाँच साल के कामों से वो खुश थे और उस उसके कारण आज वो हमारे साथ उनका आरोप है कि डरा धमका के बीजेपी सपोर्ट लेते हैं सरकार उनकी पुलिस उनकी सब कुछ उनका हम कैसे डरा सेंट्रल एजेंट अगर हम ऐसे डरा सकते थे तो हम बाहुबली बनते थे कुछ भी बोलते हैं कल संजय राउत कुछ बकेगा उसका जवाब कल सुबह बट एनी वेज कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन सर यू वॉन्ट टू डे थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू it's a worry because the number of defectors, not just from the Congress, the other alliance partners also have to worry about the number of defectors. Yes, defection has happened and we need to introspect uh, where in which party, how much uh, defection has happened, what has played, whether it was uh, uh, the muscle power, money power or the power of the government, the central government. We'll have to examine. I feel every party, including Congress party, will examine that. Sir, as per estimates right now, the Congress seems to have lost at least three, uh, uh, three defectors as per current estimates. And there's still uh, a little bit of lack of clarity on who from the Congress is winning. But I think it's going to be Bhai Jagtap as per what we're seeing now. Uh, going forward, the BJP is going to get more aggressive. They're going to attack the government. Given this problem of defectors, especially in secret ballot, do you think this is going to be a challenge for the MBA government in the days to come? No, I don't think so, uh, because uh, Mahavikas Agadi is made on a common minimum program and uh, that common minimum program is already decided. These elections uh, is a different game, uh, but whereas the common minimum program is different and uh, all the three parties, Shiv Sena, NCP and Congress, both are working together and we'll see that nothing untoward happens henceforth. Uh, so what next? Because this was one big prestige battle and the Rajya Sabha elections was a debacle, then you had this one. Uh, how do you tackle, you know, defectors? Because the refrain from the Congress party and others like Shiv Sena is that there's muscle power being used, central agencies are being used and money power being used. Exactly. That's what I said earlier also. The central agencies, the money power, muscle power has been used by BJP. And it is not only in Maharashtra. We have seen similar examples elsewhere also. The way uh, Madhya Pradesh government was toppled, the way in 2017 Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Goa had happened. Uh, we have seen even uh, uh, the last Rajya Sabha elections of Sri Ahmed Patel. Uh, two uh, MLAs were kidnapped uh, uh, by uh, uh, the Gujarat leaders of BJP. So this has been happening, should not happen in democracy, but uh, uh, unfortunately the muscle and money power plays wherever BJP is there. Sir, kis tarah se dekhte hain? Do teen din se meeting ho rahi thi, kai saare baate ho rahi thi. Jo difference tha, jitne votes Congress ko chahiye thai, jitne votes BJP ko chahiye thai, kaafi zyada difference tha. Lekin uske baawajud Congress ke jo votes hain, unke khud ke votes nahi mil hain. Aap isse kis tarah se dekhte hain? Nee, sach hai ki Congress ko first preference ke jo vote thai, हमारे उम्मीदवार को देने के लिए हमारा कोटा था हमार, हमने दिए थे फर्स्ट प्रेफरेंस के वोट्स उसमें कमी आई है इसका दोष दूसरे किसी को देने में तो कोई ये नहीं है 
ये तो दोष हमारा है कांग्रेस के हम हम जो आ, काम कर रहे हैं उसमें क्या दोष है क्यों ऐसा हो रहा है इसका हमने सोचना चाहिए हम इस पर जरूर चिंतन करेंगे और कोई ना कोई हल निकालेंगे कांग्रेस के साथ ही एनसीपी हो शिवसेना हो एक महाविकास आघाड़ी के तौर पर भी इसे एक चुनाव को देखा जा रहा था क्या दोनों पार्टी जो बाकी दो पार्टी हैं उनसे भी आपको जितना समर्थन मिलना चाहिए तो वो मिला या नहीं क्योंकि कांग्रेस की सीट्स का ऐलान होने के पहले ही शिवसेना हो उनके जो कार्यकर्ता हैं वो बाहर जश्न मनाते हुए नजर आ रहे हैं तो महाविकास आघाड़ी ने ये चुनाव साथ में लड़ा या कांग्रेस शिवसेना और एनसीपी ने चुनाव अलग अलग लड़ा आप महाविकास आघाड़ी को भी इसके लिए जिम्मेदार मानेंगे नहीं हमारे जो सहयोगी पार्टीज है शिवसेना या हो या राष्ट्रवादी हो हमारे महाविकास आघाड़ी को उनको बिल्कुल दोष में इस डिसीजन में नहीं दूंगा ये जो निकल हुआ उसमें बिल्कुल नहीं दूंगा क्योंकि ये जो हमारे कांग्रेस के वोट्स है उसमें ही कमी आई है तो दूसरे को दोष देने में क्या ये है तो इसलिए पूरा दोष तो हमारा हमारे जो हुआ है उस पर हमने हमें सोचना पड़ेगा कि क्या हुआ है और उस पर डिसीजन लेना पड़ेगा क्या आपको कोई ऐसी वजह लग रही है जिसके वजह से आपके विधायक नाराज हों या जिस तरह से कांग्रेस की भी एक अब तक एक शिकायत रही है सरकार से कि उनके फंड हों या उनकी बातें हों वो महाविकास आघाड़ी सरकार में नहीं सुने जाते हैं क्या उसे भी आप एक जिम्मेदार मानते हैं जो महाविकास आघाड़ी का दो साल पूरे करके हम आगे गए हैं और उसमें कुछ प्रॉब्लम है और ऐसा है कि एक पार्टी का सरकार होता है वही भी प्रॉब्लम होते हैं प्रॉब्लम तो हमेशा होते ही है कुछ ना कुछ तो चलता है एक पार्टी के सरकार होता है तभी भी यहाँ भी थे लेकिन उसमें से भी बहुत सारा हल, हल हमने निकले थे आ, फिर भी ये हुआ है तो हम आज तो ऐसा नहीं कह सकते कि हाँ सरकार चलाने में कोई दोष था और लोगों काम नहीं हो रहे थे इसलिए ये हुआ ऐसा ऐसा तो मैं आज नहीं कर सकता And now in a major breakthrough in the sensational case of the killing of Punjabi pop singer Sidhu Moosewala two of the main shooters have been arrested and a large number of arms and explosives were also recovered the shooters have been identified by the Delhi police let's just listen in to what Delhi police have to say On 19 tarikh ko subah ke time hamari jo special cell ki teams thi इन्होंने इनको अरेस्ट किया है ये है खारी मिठी रोड विलेज बारोई मुंद्रा पोर्ट के पास तो इन्होंने वहाँ पे एक रेंटेड मकान किसी लोकल प्रॉपर्टी डीलर के थ्रू ले रखा था क्योंकि जब इन्हें देखा कि ऑलरेडी कुछ फोटोज आपको याद होंगी कि सर्कुलेट हुई थी जो कि एक इंटरनल हमारा नोट था उसमें हमने एक शुरू में कुछ वर्किंग करी थी जिसमें हमने कुछ सस्पेक्ट्स को अंकित किया था किसी ग्राउंड पे लेकिन ऑब्वियसली सस्पेक्ट्स में से दैट वाज़ द स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट तो तीन उसमें से जो हमारा वो था कि तीन शूटर जो थे वो वही निकले रूपा मन्नु और प्रियव्रत फौजी Moving on in a shocking story from Maharashtra's uh, Sangli district nine members of a family have died by suicide the family members were found dead in their house and the police suspect that nine members they died by consuming poison also suspecting that they were in heavy debt among the nine that have been uh, that uh, have died uh, apparently by suicide one of them is a 15 year old minor the police is investigating the matter A motorized electric uh, wheelchair developed by an IIT Madras uh, incubated uh, startup is helping the differently able to break a new ground in the e-commerce delivery space including Zomato. They are Lotterland's Archka Sitara and Lotterland will support their cause with a cash incentive of 1 lakh rupees. Take a look. After his spinal cord injury, Ganesh in Chennai is perhaps India's first food delivery person in a wheelchair. For seven years, he has been working from home after a truck hit him in 2006. But this innovative motorized electric wheelchair, designed by IIT Madras, has increased his earning potential. With the push of a button. The rear part turns into a simple wheelchair, giving him the crucial, independent last mile access. 
இப்போ இங்க அம்பத்தூர்ல ஒரு அபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் டென்த் ஃபிளோர் கஸ்டமர் நான் கஸ்டமர்ட்ட நீங்க வாங்கன்னு சொல்லல நான் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லிஃப்ட் எப்படி இருக்குன்னு பார்த்தேன் ஸோ வீல் சேர் எனக்கு வந்து வீல் சேர் போற அளவுக்கு லிஃப்ட் ஃபெசிலிட்டி இருந்ததுனால ஸோ என்ன பண்ணேன் வீல் சேர் ஃப்ரெண்ட் வீல கட்டி விட்டுட்டு இமீடியா வீல் சேர்ல போனோம் டென்த் ஃபிளோர்ல போனேன் கஸ்டமர் ரொம்ப ஹாப்பி A few kilometers away, orthopedically challenged Raja Ram has signed up in Zomato. His income is now up by 9,000 rupees. I'm telling you, 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 இதுக்கு முன்னாடி நார்மலாக த்ரீ வீலர்லேயே மற்ற பைக்கில் நான் போகும்போது என்னை பார்த்த பார்வைக்கும் இப்போ என்னை பார்க்குற பார்வைக்குமே வித்தியாசம் நிறைய இருக்குது என்ன சார் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபீட் ஃப்ரம் மை டோர் ஸ்டெப் பட் ஐ ஃபீல் தட்ஸ் என்ன ஃபார் ஹிம் ஐ நீட் டு கோ ஃபார்வர்ட் அண்ட் பிரிங் தட் பார்சல் தே டு டிசர்வ் சம்திங் ஃபவுண்டட் பை த்ரீ ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபேக்கல்டி ஃப்ரம் ஐஐடி மெட்ராஸ் த கஸ்டமைஸ்ட் ரகர் வெஹிக்கிள் can cruise at 25 km an hour it takes 4 hours to charge and goes 25 km on a single charge we have in fact gotten in touch with uh, india post that they can help us uh, do post uh, letter deliveries through post office uh, we have tried to contact the newspaper uh, uh, avin for milk deliveries that is one uh, very important uh, place So anything that requires mobility the vehicle costs nearly a lakh so the founders are now roping in corporates to tap into their CSR funds they've already helped more than a thousand people eventually it's a satisfaction of the work that, that you are doing something good in the uh, uh, what you have learned from the college that you are able to put to use which we were not uh, fascinated with the corporate world innovation at iit madras creating new opportunities for the differently abled in the e-commerce delivery space researchers say this is just the beginning and the best is yet to come in chennai with suresh sam daniel find the tv thank you so much for the team of uh, lotto land Uh, well, very good morning. Uh, let's uh, get your top story. Even as the opposition is yet to choose its candidate for presidential post, the BJP will hold its parliamentary board meeting today where it's likely to finalize its pick for the election slated to be held on the 18th of July. The prime minister is likely to join the meeting virtually and the BJP has already formed a 14-member management team to oversee the election. to get uh, more details uh, about uh, this crucial meeting that's going to be taking place we have my colleague uh, sanket uh, joining us on the phone line uh, sanket that crucial meeting uh, being planned by the bjp and uh, while uh, it's mamta banerjee who's going to be skipping the pawar led meeting of opposition parties well yes this is a significant move by the bjp however it was uh, uh, you know pretty much decided that by the end of this week the bjp will name its uh, presidential candidate uh as you have also mentioned the bjp has done two things uh, which they have been doing uh, over the past one week number one mr jp nadda and rajnath singh have been entrusted the overall responsibility of coordination uh now this means speaking to nda as well as upa allies and other non nda non upa allies also uh to cobble up support uh, because uh, the bjp on its own has about 49% of the electoral college Uh, to elect your own president you need uh, to cross the 50% mark so for the bharatiya janata party they would need some amount of support not uh, a lot because they already have 49% so that coordination and also hoping that this is a no contest and there is a uh, there, there is a there is a president who is uh, uh, elected with everyone support uh, that coordination was done by rajnath singh as well as uh, jp nadda uh to that effect he also uh, these two leaders have been reaching out to many of the parties uh however apart from that the bjp also formed a sort of a crack team which has many union ministers as well as the senior functionaries of the bjp who were also doing their own bit of coordination speaking to the various candidates and at the same time keeping this entire enterprise top secret which is uh, uh, how the bjp likes to do uh, 
you know it's tough so now finally it seems that uh, in the evening the bjp parliamentary board which is the highest decision making body of the bharatiya janata party is going to meet we are expecting that the prime minister too will attend however it is not known see these things keep changing last minute we do not know whether the prime minister is going to attend in person or virtually uh, remember he has been uh, participating in the yoga functions he is in karnataka today uh, he has a meeting with the tri services chief also and then in the evening uh, depending on by when he comes back and he, when he is available this meeting is going to take place around 6 o'clock or between 6 to 7 pm uh, in which the pm may either attend in person or attend virtually uh, his attendance is a must because this is a parliamentary board meeting and he is a very important constituent of the parliamentary board uh, after which uh, there will be consultations the crack team uh, is going to tell the options what they have discussed the numbers the math with the prime minister uh, and then eventually we may or may not hear the president's name the candidate's name there is a, a very strong possibility that the parliamentary board may meet again also however it is also a strong possibility that the name could be announced this evening so uh, within this week the bjp has kept its date of uh, of uh, choosing their presidential candidate in the meanwhile in the opposition cap hectic pale is going on uh, mamta banerji is skipping the the meeting of the opposition leaders uh, three candidates so far have uh, turned down the request to be president from the opposition camp uh, mr sharad sawar mr farooq abdullah and gopal krishna gandhi uh, mk gandhi's uh, grandson so uh, that's the movement that is happening at this moment uh, as far as the Uh, presidential race is concerned so get the last date for filing of nominations is the 29th of june and uh, those elections that will be held on the 18th of next month exactly which is why this week becomes very very crucial it's the first already uh, so uh, you know before the filing of the nominations you have to decide on the name what uh, the bjp is trying to do at least their entire initiative was that there be no contest uh, and when will there be no contest is when uh, all constituents whether it is opposition or the government uh, they agree on a name then there is no election then there is just a selection there is one person backed by all now that is what the bjp was hoping the one thing that the bjp has not done so far is reveal who the name is going to there are many names that are being speculated by the way 2017 i distinctly remember many names were being circulated then also and then suddenly the surprise candidature of ramnath kovin uh came into the picture right uh, so get any murmurs this time around no <laughs> there are many uh, many names floating there is uh, uh, you know i would not like to hazard a guess because uh, trust me from uh, my uh, experience of covering this party uh, the names that you float or the names that you speak about uh, are never the names uh, that uh, eventually make the cut so uh, many many such names being spoken about in the political circles uh there is also this uh, theory that uh, this time a tribal may be elevated to the position of the president but i guess uh, it'll be wise to wait right sanket uh, absolutely so that crucial meeting that's going to be taking place we will keep coming back to you for more on that and like you mentioned a third person who has turned down that offer former west bengal governor gopal krishna gandhi who turned out the opposition party's request to contest the upcoming presidential elections the 77 year old is the third political person after nationalist congress party sharad pawar and like sanket was mentioning also uh, jammu and kashmir's former chief minister farooq abdullah both have also withdrawn their names as the probable opposition nominee for the july election so get gets us the details so hectic parlays are now going to take place as far as the race to raisina is concerned and there are largely two camps here one is of course the government led by the bjp and the other is the opposition and you can see the various uh, uh, movements taking place in the opposition camp let's first talk about the government that is the bharatiya janata party so we know that jp nadda he held a meeting with a 14 member management team on sunday Now BJP announced the president poll's crack team. They have a crack team of 14 people. This is going to be led by Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat, Union Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal, G Kishan Reddy, Ashwini Vaishnav. All were part of the team, and they had a meeting at Mr. Shekhawat's residence on Sunday. BJP General Secretary Vinod Tawde, C T Ravi, all of them attended. Now, if you also recall, Rajnath Singh and J P Nadda have been authorized by the party to speak to NDA and UPA allies on likely names, and this is interesting. 
because sources tell us that Nadda and Singh have reached out to many non-UPA, non-NDA partners. They have about 49% of the electoral college to have your own candidate inside the Rashtrapati Bhavan. You need to cross 50%. They hope that the like-minded parties will support them and they will very easily cross the 50% mark. They have also, as a part of this exercise of reaching out to UPA as well as NDA constituents, uh, reached out to Mamta Banerjee, Sharad Pawar, Malikarjun Kharge, Akhilesh Yadav, Mayavati and Shibu Soren. What happened in those talks, we do not know. But an attempt has been made so that there is a consensus candidate. But let's now find out what is happening in the opposition camp because that's where a lot of movement is taking place. Now, there is a big opposition meeting which is expected tomorrow on the 21st of June. Mamta Banerjee is unlikely to attend this meeting and Abhishek Banerjee is going to attend in her place. Last meeting, if you recall, was held on the 15th of June in New Delhi. The TRS had not supported the opposition meet back then. It's interesting what their position is going to be now. MIM is going to send a representative. Three candidates so far have backed out from the race so far and this is a big blow to the opposition. Sharad Pawar, Farooq Abdullah and now Gopal Krishna Gandhi have all said no. The opposition is yet to finalize their presidential as well as vice presidential candidate and the candidates for the government or the BJP also remain a mystery. Lots of movement, the names not quite out yet. No, so many names came at the stage. Pawar's name was there, then Gobal Krishna Gandhi's name was there, Farooq Abdurajika's name was there. So many names were there. But after going through all these names, mm. a final name will emerge. We are on the verge of it. On the verge of it. Yes. But discussions are still on. Discussion means discussions. It has to continue. But where will it be? It will the parliamentary complex. Parliamentary complex. And uh, what time? 2.30. And uh, major, uh, major opposition parties are to meet and deliberate on the consensus candidate for the presidential poll today. A similar meeting attended by 17 opposition parties was convened last week in uh, the national uh, capital. And uh, moving on, in, uh, in fact, uh, we have a third plea uh, that has uh, now uh, been uh, filed. Uh, the centre moves uh, the Supreme Court over Agnipath scheme. The centre is saying that the court must hear the government side pleas against uh, the Agnipath scheme. And there is another petition that is being challenging uh, the Agnipath scheme filed in the Supreme Court. This is the third plea that's been filed against the Agnipath scheme. All three pleas so far have been filed by lawyers. The third plea has also been filed uh, this time around by lawyer Harsh Ajay Singh. Earlier, two pleas were filed by lawyers Vishal Tiwari and ML Sharma. We have uh, my colleague Sukirti uh, joining us. Uh, Sukirti, a third plea that's been filed against the Agnipath scheme and the centre saying that first listen in to what we have to say before you can make any sort of decision. Well, yes, Divya, this is significant because this is a scheme that has been very vehemently uh, defended by the centre in the last few days because of the widespread protests that have been unfolding all across the country and uh, in which uh, even train engines have been set on fire. So, uh, but despite the centre's clarification, uh, there seems to be a lot of controversy with these pleas repeatedly being filed uh, in the top court of India and three pleas so far, all of them filed by lawyers, three separate pleas, uh, all of them challenge the Agnipat scheme and they not only say that the scheme is unconstitutional and has been formulated without any consultation process being carried out, but it also says that uh, an SIT should be formed to assess the damage that has occurred across India after this scheme was announced. Uh, so three pleas challenging the Agnipat scheme. However, the central government in a significant move has moved the top court filing this caveat uh, saying that no decision on this matter should be taken until we've been heard in court. Uh, however, it's important to point out that while the pleas have been filed, it's only the filing that has been done so far. They have not been listed for hearing yet. Uh, so we do not know when the matter will come up in the top court. Uh, but for now, what we can say for sure, three pleas against the scheme, uh, against the scheme and center moving the top court, uh, saying that we should be heard as well. Right, Sukiti, we will keep tracking the story for more on that. Thank you for joining us.
And the three service chiefs are set to meet the Prime Minister Narendra Modi to brief him on the Agnipath recruitment scheme, which has as seen nationwide protests like Sukiti was uh, talking about, mostly by the youth across the country. Several opposing parties, including the Congress, have dubbed Agnipath the latest blunder of the government as a part of the series that includes uh, demonetization as well as farm loss. The government has ruled out a rollback. In fact, even as the protests continued over the center's Agnipath short-term recruitment plan for armed forces, the army issued a notification for the induction of soldiers under the scheme and the online registration begins from July. And we also have Manora Lal Khattar uh, putting out a tweet saying that I declare that under Agnipath scheme, Agnivirs who come back after serving the country for four years will be given jobs in the Haryana government with a guarantee that is what ML Khattar has put out in a tweet. And with that, we're sipping a very short break. On the other side, we'll get you the latest from Assam. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, massive floods uh, have hit uh, the Barak Valley region of Assam and this is uh, the region uh, where in fact uh, it has been cut off uh, as far as road and rail uh, lines are concerned. Uh, one lakh litre of fuel will be airlifted to the Barak Valley. More NDRF teams are being rushed to that particular area. The river at the Barak River is flowing uh, near to the highest of flood levels, overflowing uh, river there in uh, the Barak area. Over 80% of the Silchar town has now been inundated. Rescue and relief operations have been launched. The Barak Valley is cut off by rail as well as road. NDRF uh, are leading rescue operations along with the Army, CRPF, BSF and the Assam Rifle Unit as well. In Meghalaya, the key Sonapur tunnel has been hit by landslides again and those are visuals of passengers being stuck. In fact, they are visuals of uh, passengers being stuck in slush. Meghalaya uh, is connected to the northeast through this uh, tunnel of uh, Sonapur, which has uh, been hit by landslide. And there you can see visuals of people, how they are managing to get their way out of that tunnel. My colleague Ratnadeep is joining us on the phone line. Ratnadeep, uh, the IMD is saying, that's the Met Office, uh, that it will continue raining till Friday, no respite. And those, uh, uh, the kind of rain that we're expecting is going to be still continuing to be heavy as far as the salmon Meghalaya is concerned. There uh, is a rain alert, but it is not a red alert. So that is something that the people uh, would uh, feel that uh, the rain might not be uh, as hard as uh, it was last week. But remember, there would be rainfall. And if that rainfall continues, then the situation might turn more grave, particularly in Barak Valley region, where all the rivers are uh, uh, showing rising trend. In fact, uh, particularly in Silchar town, the district headquarters of Kachar district, the main city of Barak Valley uh, in southern Assam, where the Barak river uh, water has uh, last... Uh, from yesterday started flowing inside the Silchar city. What we are told by government sources is that about 80% of the uh, city is completely inundated. And uh, we have been uh, getting uh, you know calls from last night from uh, people in Silchar about the conditions. Uh, you know, uh, all the roads are blocked. In fact, the district administration has uh, uh, you know uh, issued an order that all the tra traffic movement needs to be stopped. The focus at this moment is rescue and relief operations there in Barak Valley. Remember that area is completely cut off by road and rail in the first wave of floods, the pre-monsoon floods, uh, uh, you know, one month ba uh, back where the uh, the rail link got snapped. That is not up as yet. And then in this flood, the National Highway 6 in uh, uh, Meghalaya got uh, caved, uh, the, that uh, caved in and therefore the road link got snapped. And yeah, yesterday you had that massive landslide in Sunapur uh, tunnel. So uh, in, in such a situation, now the state government is has decided to take help of the Indian Air Force and essential supplies, including fuel, will be airlifted uh, to uh, uh, Silchar. And uh, what uh, also rescue teams, more teams of NDRF, that's what we are hearing from NDRF sources, more teams of NDRF will be rushed into Barak Valley. Indian, Indian Army 
Assam Rifles, BSF, and CRPF have already rushed in their teams to uh, uh, Barak Valley, particularly to Silchar, to help the uh, SDRF and the NDRF teams there. But as the uh, as we played out that soundbite of the deputy commissioner, that they are getting a lot of uh, SOS calls of, for rescue. So the you know with 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 the entire city getting inundated, lakhs of people inundated now. Uh, they're stuck in homes. There is no electricity in some areas. The internet connectivity is also disrupted. Uh, so therefore, it, it is a complete calamity. It's a complete nightmare for the people in that region. Also in other parts of uh, Sam, particularly in Kampur area, in Nagao district, the situation is volatile. It is completely cut off from the rest of the state. And in, there in Kampur, also the state government is, uh, you know, contemplating for air dropping essential supplies uh, uh, because right. uh, the Kapuli River there is still flowing above uh, high flood level. So if it rains, then the situation might turn more uh, uh, more grave in Assam. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ratnadi, for joining us. Uh, over 47 lakh people have been affected in 32 uh, districts. Uh, 11 people have died as far as floods are concerned in the last uh, 24 hours alone. And the chief minister held an urgent review of the situation to chalk out a faster rescue and relief operation plan. In fact, uh, the Indian Air Force is also uh, being roped in as far as rescue operations are concerned. Uh, here is a full story. Ravina Bordolo is cooking the only meal of the day that her family of six will have as they huddle together at this shelter, a raised platform which is now home for them since the past five days. Since the floods ravaged their village, 50 other flood affected people like them are taking shelter here on this open stage, which was also their shelter a month back in the first wave of floods. Ravina fears her hut must have been washed away by now. She has also lost two bighas of standing rice crop. Kampur in Nogao district has faced two massive floods in just one month. People's home had not even dried up completely before the second round of flood waters gushed in, spreading destruction in their way. The Kopli River, which flows beside Kampur, is flowing above highest flood levels. And you can see here, everything is inundated. The houses are inundated. Most of the people from the villages around Kampur have been evacuated and taken to safer places. These people were the last people, and now they have taken this dangerous ride on a country boat to reach uh, a safer place. Incessant rains for a week. The sudden release of huge volume of water from a dam upstream of Kopili River triggered a breach in the embankment and high floods. Locals say it's the biggest since 2004. In Kampur alone, over 2,21,000 people have been affected. 107 villages are inundated, village roads and bridges badly damaged, leaving vast areas completely cut off, now accessible only by boat. Each day a fight for survival. Two police personnel, including the officer in charge of Kampur police station, were washed away in the high floods. Their dead bodies recovered on Monday. Chief Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma held an urgent review of the situation to chalk out faster rescue and relief operations. Life has become very uncertain for these helpless people. They really don't know when they will be able to get back to their homes. Even staying here is full of challenges. Their rations are fast running out and government help is yet to arrive. From Kampur, with Kampur and Sanjay Chakravarti, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV.
Welcome back. Now, cracks have emerged within the Shiv Sena and the Mahavikas Agari. Uh, we have uh, senior Shiv Sena leader and cabinet minister in the Maharashtra government uh, with several other MLAs in a hotel in Gujarat. This comes after the Maharashtra's MLC elections where BJP won five out of uh, ten seats. To get more details, we have Sohit. Sohit, uh, turmoil in uh, Maharashtra's uh, politics. Well, that's right. After humiliating defeat in the MLC elections as well, what we can say is that the MVA government as of now is on shaky grounds. Senior uh, leader of Shiv Sena, Cabinet Minister Ekna Chinde, along with several MLAs are not reachable. And as per the details we have, he is in Surat in a hotel along with uh, several other uh, leaders. Uh, yesterday I met him and he was in the uh, Maharashtra Vidhan Bhavan. But later, after afternoon, uh, during the afternoon, he left from there. And after that, he is unreachable. Uh, if you speak about Ekna Shinde, he usually is present in all the press conferences. Even yesterday when we were expecting that Shiv Sena, both the MLA, MLCs of the Shiv Sena were victorious. Ekna Shinde would be present over there. But he wasn't present and uh, he is not reachable. In fact, there was a meeting that happened in the Varsha Bangalore, the official residence of Chief Minister Uddhav Thakri yesterday. That is a meeting around 12 p.m. today uh, that is going to happen over there as well. Sanjay Raut, uh, Chief Spokesperson as well as the M MP from Shiv Sena, he was supposed to go to Delhi but he is in Mumbai and he will also be going to that meeting. And now the there are several uh, people who are trying to ensure that Ekna Shinde along with the MLAs come back to uh, Mumbai or attend this meeting. Now Ekna Shinde is a very senior leader and he is known for his organization skills. Uh, as well as uh, he, he is known uh, to have a good support among the people. Now, uh, for the last few months or you can say for the last two years, he has been sidelined within the government itself. This is what is being said by the sources who are close to him. And that is also known to be one of the reasons why he is upset. And now he, along with several leaders or uh, along with several MLAs, are not reachable. And this is going to be a huge uh, uh, what we can say is that it is not a good news for the MVA government because uh, even now they are on shaky grounds. Now remember that yesterday in the MLC elections, the BJP won, uh, got 134 votes. Uh, 144 votes are required uh, to uh, form a government in Maharashtra. And in one election, BJP is getting 134 votes. And at, at the same time, Ekna Shinde or several of their leaders are not traceable, they are unreachable. Right. So this is definitely not a good news for the Mahavikas Aghadi government, especially when Chief Minister is from Shiv Sena. He is uh, the founder, uh, he is uh, the current president of Shiv Sena, uh, Uddhav Thakre. And despite that, uh, Shiv Sena leaders are unhappy. So a meeting is scheduled at 12 p.m. But this is not a good news for uh, Shiv Sena or the Maharashtra government. And this is coming after two defeats in one week. Number one is the Rajya Sabha defeat and later the MLC defeat, right. where BJP was victorious in both of these elections. Right, so Hit, right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us with all those uh, details. We also have Mahesh uh, Tapse, the chief spokesperson of the NCP, joining us. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Tapse, I'd like to ask you, is the future of the Maha Vikas Agari safe? Yeah, good morning, Devya. Let me tell you and assure you and your viewers that the future of the Mahavikas Agari government is absolutely safe. There may have been some confusion in the Rajya Sabha election, but the result of yesterday, the Legislative Council election is based purely on horse trading. How does one explain that you know, 105 MLAs on one side and 171 MLAs on one side, and still they uh, you know, gather the requisite number of votes to uh, win the last seat? So there is definitely an angle of horse trading. They have improved the tally from 113 to 133, I guess, in the uh, council election. So BJP has managed to do something which does not seem to be a very constitutional practice. Right. Uh, so we have uh, seen, of course, uh, cross-voting like you were talking about. Eknath Shinde seems to be unhappy as well uh, and he seems to be unreachable. This is what I've just read in the newspapers. I don't have any authority to comment on that. I think the Shiv Sena party leader will take appropriate call on that. Right. Uh, after Rajya Sabha, we did see uh, Mahavikas Agari facing a defeat in the MLC elections as well. And this is happening after Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar said that there will be uh, a miracle, quote-unquote, he was talking about a chamatkar. Well, definitely Congress push in the second candidate and we tried our best. However, we do not know what has happened, what has gone wrong. So, evaluate, BJP managed to get that extra 12-13 votes. 
and uh, after we reach to a certain conclusion then we'll want to speak and uh, things to light right uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this uh, morning and talking to us here on ndtv now, five candidates of Maharashtra's ruling alliance and five of the BJP got elected to the Legislative Council on Monday amid cross-voting by MLAs believed to be on the government side. NDTV Saurav Gupta spoke with some key players involved. Let's just listen in. Uh, very quickly, uh, sir, firstly, congratulations. You, you won. But, uh, you know, there is also uh, uh, the fact is that the MVA together hasn't really won. It's not like this. If you see that we have all won uh, seats which we had contested and you have seen ke how uh, the opposition has tried to manipulate this vote, how they have tried to pressurize the people and I uh, really congratulate to the brave MLAs who in spite of so many things, so many things which they tried to do it karke, and they have voted uh, to this Mahavikas Agadi. So have all Shiv Sena MLAs voted as expected or has there it been some accepted. cross voting? No, it is accepted. Uh, Sir, uh, defectors bahut sare hue sarkar se and aap, uh, you are the fifth candidate of the BJP who has won. Uh, defectors ke baare mein kya kahenge? Jo aapko jitaya hai. Definitely we are very happy. Our great leader Devendra Fadnavi ji, jinho ne ye sari rananiti banai, us Devendra Fadnavi ji ka mein man se abhar maanta hoon. Aur ye pure mahavika sagadi ka vijay parabo hai. Bharatiya Janta Party ka jo vijay hua, uske saamne Shiva Sena ke baramad jo kam hue, ये हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है जिस तरीके से संजय राउत जी ने कल बताया था कि हम देवेंद्र फडणवीस हमारे पैर के नीचे आकर बैठेंगे आज महाविकास आघाड़ी को उनके पैर के तरह रोंगला कर हमने मारा है और उसका हमें अभिमान है सर ये डिफेक्टर्स आए कैसे बीजेपी में ये बताइए मुख्यमंत्री मिलते नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी काम करता नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी के पास लोग जाते हैं तो किसी के पास वक्त नहीं है महाविकास आघाड़ी भ्रष्टाचार में मग्न है ऐसे ऐसे समय में जो आमदार सच में काम करना चाहते हैं वो आमदार देवेंद्र जी के पाँच साल के पिछले पाँच साल के कामों से वो खुश थे और उस उसके कारण आज वो हमारे साथ उनका आरोप है कि डरा धमका के बीजेपी सपोर्ट लेते हैं सरकार उनकी पुलिस उनकी सब कुछ उनका हम कैसे डराएंगे सेंट्रल एजेंट अगर हम ऐसे डरा सकते थे तो हम बाहुबली बनते थे कुछ भी बोलते हैं कल संजय राउत कुछ बकेगा उसका जवाब कल सुबह बट एनी वेज कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन सर यू वॉन्ट टू थैंक यू वेरी मच it's a worry because the number of defectors, not just from the Congress, the other alliance partners also have to worry about the number of defectors. Yes, defection has happened and we need to introspect uh, where in which party, how much uh, defection has happened, what has played, whether it was uh, uh, the muscle power, money power or the power of the government, or the central government. We'll have to examine. I feel every party, including Congress party, will examine that. Sir, as per estimates right now, the Congress seems to have lost at least three, uh, uh, three defectors as per current estimates. And there's still uh, a little bit of lack of clarity on who from the Congress is winning. But I think it's going to be Bhai Jagtap as per what we're seeing now. Uh, going forward, the BJP is going to get more aggressive. They're going to attack the government. Given this problem of defectors, especially in secret ballot, do you think this is going to be a challenge for the MBA government in the days to come? No, I don't think so, uh, because uh, Mahavikas Agadi is made on a common minimum program and uh, that common minimum program is already decided. These elections uh, is a different game, uh, but whereas the common minimum program is different and uh, all the three parties, Shiv Sena, NCP and Congress, both are working together and we'll see that nothing untoward happens henceforth. Uh, so what next? Because this was one big prestige battle and the Rajya Sabha elections was a debacle, then you had this one. Uh, how do you tackle, you know, defectors? Because the refrain from the Congress party and others like Shiksena is that there's muscle power being used, central agencies are being used and money power being used. Exactly, that's what I said earlier also. The central agencies, the money power, muscle power has been used by BJP and it is not only in Maharashtra. We have seen similar examples elsewhere also. The way uh, Madhya Pradesh government was toppled, the way in 2017 Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Goa had happened. Uh, we have seen even uh, at the last Rajya Sabha elections of Sri Ahmed Patel, 
two MLAs were kidnapped uh, by uh, the Gujarat leaders of BJP. So this has been happening, should not happen in democracy, but uh, uh, unfortunately the muscle and money power plays wherever BJP is there. Moving on in other news, Rahul Gandhi has been summoned to bar the Enforcement Directorate for the fifth day for questioning in the alleged uh, National Herald money laundering case today. The central agency had uh, grilled the Congress leader for over 40 hours so far over a matter of four days. The questioning will be completed today. Mr. Gandhi's statement is being formally recorded under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. To get more details, we have my colleague Arvind uh, joining us. Arvind, all the questioning to be completed today itself? Uh, yeah, uh, Divya, that's what our sources are hinting at. In fact, Rahul Gandhi has been already been questioned by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the National Herald case for almost four days. That is over 40 hours he has been grilled by the agency and his state statements have been recorded by the agency. And today he has again been called for questioning for the fifth day. And what we are being told is that Rahul Gandhi left the Enforcement Directorate office only around 12.30 a.m. last night. And today he will be again appearing before the agency somewhere around 11.15 a.m. That's what our sources are saying. So today the agency is also planning to wrap up this entire questioning. So we'll get to know at the end of the day whether the agency will be uh, completing the questioning or concluding the questioning today itself or whether he will be called again uh, tomorrow or some other time. But what we are being told is that as on date, almost 90 odd questions have been asked to Rahul Gandhi and he has given us answers and the agency sources say that there are few more questions left that will be asked today. That's what our sources are hinting us. So in total, 90 odd questions have been asked during the, all these four days of questioning and today will be the fifth day where Rahul Gandhi will be appearing before the agency and on the other hand side, the Congress leaders and the Congress MPs will also continue with their protest against the alleged misuse of central agencies and also against the Agnipat scheme at uh, this time inside the Congress headquarters. According to uh, Congress leaders, the Congress party workers are not being allowed to come to Jantam Mantar either and that's why today the party has changed its strategy once again. And I mean, today last the Congress party we saw will be that the police had entered the headquarters and they were picking them up from the headquarters and not letting the protests even there. Uh, Divya, that was one of the allegations of the Congress party saying that the police personnel entered into the party headquarters last week and then they attacked the party workers. But the, Cong but the Delhi police have uh, vehemently denied it, saying that they did not enter the party to attack the party workers. In fact, there were some miscreants who were throwing some uh, some uh, some articles or materials at the police personnel from inside the party headquarters, and that's why they had gone inside to pick that particular person alone. And the Delhi police have maintained that they did not. There was no crackdown inside the party headquarters. But today, the Congress sources say that they have changed their strategy, and then today the protests will happen inside the party headquarters. Right, Arvind, uh, Rahul Gandhi had got that brief uh, relief uh, from the Enforcement Directorate over the weekend and of course that questioning started yesterday again on Monday and this was on ground of uh, Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi's mother. She had been unwell. She has now been discharged from the hospital. What update as far as summoning of Ra uh, Sonia Gandhi is concerned? Divya, the Enforcement Directorate has already issued summons to Sonia Gandhi asking her to appear on June 23rd, that is on Thursday in connection with the same matter. Uh, Sonia Gandhi has just been discharged from Sir Gangaram Hospital after a week-long treatment at the hospital for COVID-related illness and she has just been uh, discharged and she has been advised to take rest at home. So uh, what we are being told is that in all probability, Sonia Gandhi is unlikely to attend the Enforcement Directorate questioning on June 23rd, that is on Thursday. She would be writing to the Enforcement Directorate asking for a fresh date or a fresh summons for her because she has been advised to take rest at, at home. She is she's still recovering and that's what our sources are hinting at. Right, Arvind, we will keep tracking the story. And like you said, uh, Rahul Gandhi expected to be at the Enforcement Directorate office at about 11.30, 11.40 this morning. We will keep tracking the story, keep coming back to you for more while protests are expected at the headquarters of the Congress. Moving on, Israel is set to hold a fifth general election in under four years after its fractured coalition government concluded it could not survive. My colleague Parmesha Bawa is here to break down the details for us. Parmesha? Thank you, Divya. Israel's weakened coalition government has announced that it would dissolve parliament and call for new elections, setting the stage for the possible return of power of former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu or another period of prolonged political gridlock. Now, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, a former ally and aide of Benjamin Netanyahu, formed his government a year ago with the aim of halting the never-ending cycle of elections. But the fragile coalition government, which includes parties from across the political spectrum, lost its majority earlier this year and has faced rebellions from different lawmakers in recent weeks. 
Now, Bennett will step aside to be replaced by Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, his partner in the unlikely coalition of the opposites that ended former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's record 12-year rule 12 months ago. Now, announcing his plan to disband the government during a nationally televised news conference, Bennett said he made the right decision in difficult circumstances. Despite the Israeli coalition's successes, which by the way include passing a national budget for the first time in three years, the coalition eventually unraveled in large part because several members of Bennett's own hardline party objected to what they felt were his pragmatism and moderation. But why is this coalition crumbling? Well, many of the parties had little in common beyond a shared animosity to Netanyahu. Often described as a political experiment, the coalition made history by becoming the first to include an Arab party. Now, what happens under their coalition deal? Lapid, who heads the large centrist party, Yesh Atid, becomes the interim prime minister until the election, in which he is expected to be the main rival to Benjamin Netanyahu. This development comes a week after U.S. President Joe Biden announced plans for a 14th of July visit to Israel, the West Bank and Saudi Arabia. Now, crucial to note that Biden's visit will take place as planned, according to Israeli media, which said he will also meet Yair Lapid. Now, it's a scene that no scriptwriter would have attempted. A fifth general election in under four years shows all is not well in Israel.